Empire, part two. Commander Root had Holly's locator frequency keyed into his helmet face screen. It took Root longer than expected to reach Dublin. The modern wing rigs were more complicated than he was used to. Plus, he'd neglected to take refresher courses. At the right altitude, he could almost superimpose the luminous map on his visor over the actual Dublin streets below him, almost. Foley, you pompous centaur, he barked into his mouthpiece. Problem, boss man, came the tinny reply. Problem, you can say that again. When was the last time you updated the Dublin files? Root could hear, Root could hear sucking noises in his ear. It sounded as though Foley was having lunch. Sorry, Commander. Just finishing off this carrot. Um, mm, Dublin. Let's see. Mm, 75? Uh, 1875? I thought so. This place is completely different. The humans have even managed to change the shape of the coastline. So the map that c the Commander has is 150-odd years out of date. 150 years old. So Dublin has changed enormously. Foley was silent for a moment. Root could just imagine him wrestling with the problem. The centaur did not like to be told that any part of his system was out of date. OK, he said at last. Here's what I'm going to do. We have a scope on a satellite TV bird with a footprint in Ireland. I see, muttered Root, which was basically a lie. I'm going to email last week's sweep direct to your visor. Luckily, there's a video card in all the new helmets. Luckily... The tricky bit will be to coordinate your flight pattern with the video feed. Root had had enough. How long, Foley? Um, two minutes, give or take. Give or take what? Uh, about ten years if my calculations are off. Well, they'd better not be off then. Right, I'll hover until we know. 124 seconds later, which is two minutes and four seconds. Root's black and white blueprints faded out to be replaced by full-colour daylight imaging. When Root moved it forward, and Holly's locator beacon dot moved too. Impressive, said Root. What was that, Commander? I said impressive, shouted Root. No need to get a swollen head. The Commander heard the sound of a room full of laughter and realised that Foley had him on the speakers. Everyone had heard him complimenting the centaur's work, There'd be no talking to him for at least a month, but it was worth it. The video he was receiving now was bang up to date. If Captain Short was being held in a building, the computer would be able to give him three-dimensional blueprints instantaneously. It was foolproof, except. Foley, the beacon's gone off shore. What's going on? There's a boat or ship, sir, I'd say to guess. Root cursed himself for not thinking of it. They'd be having a right old giggle in the situation room. Of course it was a ship. Root dropped down a few hundred metres until his shadowy outline loomed through the mist. It was a whaler, by the looks of it. Technology may have changed over the centuries, but there was still nothing like a harpoon to slaughter the world's largest mammal. Captain Short is in there somewhere, Foley. Below decks. What can you give me? Nothing, sir. It's, it's not a permanent fixture. By the time we've run down her registration, it, it'll be too late. What about thermal imaging? Thermal imaging is a camera that um, where the image is of the heat that things give off. So police helicopters use thermal imaging at night. Uh, when they can't see anything on the ground, what they will see is the heat signature of uh, people, because we obviously give off heat. It's called thermal imaging. No, Commander, that hull must be at least 50 years old. It's very high lead content. We can't even penetrate the first layer. I'm afraid you're on your own. Root shook his head. After all the billions we've poured into your department, remind me to slash your budget when I get back. Yes, sir, came the reply. Sullen for once. Foley did not like budget jokes. Just have the retrieval squad on full alert. I may need them at a moment's notice. I will, sir. You'd better... Over and out. So, Root was on his own. Truth be told, that was the way he liked it. No science, no uppity centaur whinnying in his ear. Just a fairy, his wits, and maybe a touch of magic. Root tilted his polymer wings 
hugging the underside of a fog bank. There was no need to be careful. With his shield activated, he was invisible to the human eye. Even on stealth sensitive radar, he would be no more than a barely perceptible distortion. The commander swooped low to the gunwales. It was an ugly craft, this one. The smell of death and pain lingered in the blood swabbed decks. Many noble creatures had died here, died and been dissected for a few bars of soap and some heating oil. Root shook his head. Humans were such barbarians. Holly's beeper was flashing urgently now. She was close, very close. Somewhere within a 200 metre radius was the hopefully still breathing form of Captain Short. But with blueprints, he would have to navigate the belly, but without blueprints, sorry, without uh, the uh, plans of the, of the ship, he would have to navigate the belly of this ship unaided. He alighted gently on the deck. He had landed gently on the deck, his boots adhering slightly to the mixture of dried soap and blubber coating the steel surface. The craft appeared to be deserted. There was no sentry on the gangplank. There was no boatswain on the bridge, not a light anywhere. Still no reason to abandon caution. Root knew from bitter experience that humans popped up when you least expected them. Once when he was helping the retrieval boys scrape some pod, pod wreckage off a tunnel wall, they were spotted by a group of potholing humans. What a mess that had been. Mass hysteria, high-speed chases, group mind wipes. The whole nine yards. Root shuddered. Nights like that could put decades on a ferry. Keeping himself fully shielded, the commander stowed his wings in their sheath, advancing on foot across the deck. There were no other life forms showing up on his screen, but like Foley said, the hull had a high lead content. Even the paint was lead-based. The entire boat was a floating eco-hazard. The point being that there could be an entire battalion of stormtroopers concealed below decks and his helmet cam would never pick them up. Very reassuring. Even Holly's beacon was a few shades below par and that had a micro-nuclear battery sending out the pulses. Root didn't like this. Not one bit. Right, keep calm, he told himself. You're shielded. There's not a human alive that can see you now. Root hauled open the first hatch. It swung easily enough. The commander sniffed. The mud people had greased the hinges with whale blubber. Was there no end to their depravity? The corridor was steeped in viscous darkness, so Root flicked down his infrared filter. Okay, so sometimes technology did come in handy, but he wouldn't be telling Foley that. The maze of pipes and grilling before him was immediately illuminated with an unnatural red light. Minutes later, he was regretting even thinking something nice about the Centaur's technology. The infrared filter was messing with his depth perception and he'd whacked his head on two protruding U-bends so far. Still no sign of life, human or fairy. Plenty of animal, mostly rodents. And when you're just topping a metre in height yourself, a good-sized rat can be a real threat, especially since rats are one of the few breeds that can see straight through a fairy shield. Root unstrapped his blaster and set it to level three, or medium rare, as the elves in the locker room called it. He sent one of the rats scurrying away with a smoking behind as a warning to the rest. Nothing fatal, just enough to teach him not to look sideways at a fairy again in a hurry. Root picked up his pace. This place was ideal for an ambush. He was virtually blind with his back to the only exit. It was a recon nightmare. If one of his own men had pulled a stunt like this, he'd have their stripes for it. But desperate times required judicious risk-taking. That was the essence of command. He ignored several doors to either side, following the beacon. Ten metres now. A steel hatch sealed the corridor and Captain Short, or her corpse, meaning dead body, lay on the other side of it. Root put his shoulder to the door. It swung open without protest. Bad news. If a live creature was being held captive, the hatch would be locked.
The commander flicked the blaster's power level to five and advanced through the hole. His weapon hummed softly. There was enough power on tap to vaporise a bull elephant with a single blast. No sign of Holly. No sign of anything much. He was in a refrigerated storage bay. Glittering stalactites hung from a maze of piping. Root's breath fanned before him in icy clouds. How would that look to a human? Disembodied breathing. Ah, said a familiar voice. We have a visitor. Root dropped to one knee, levelling the handgun at the voice's source. Come to rescue your missing officer, no doubt. The commander blinked a bead of sweat from his eye. Sweat? At this temperature? Well, I'm afraid you've come to the wrong place. The voice was tinny. It was artificial, amplified, meaning uh, electronically it was made louder. Root checked his locator for signs of life. There were none, not in this chamber at any rate. He was being monitored somehow. Was there a camera here somewhere, concealed in the maze of overhead plumbing that could penetrate the fairy shield? Where are you? Show yourself. The human chuckled. It echoed unnaturally around the vast hold. Oh no, not yet, my fairy friend. But soon enough. And believe me, when I do, you'll wish I hadn't. Root followed the voice. Keep the human talking. What do you want? Hmm. What do I want? Well, again, you will know soon enough. There was a low crate in the centre of the hold. On it sat an attaché case, a briefcase. The case was open. Why bring me here at all? Root poked the case with his pistol. Nothing happened. I brought you here for a demonstration. The commander leaned over the open container. Inside, in snug foam packing, were a flat vacuum-packed package and a triple-band VHF transmitter resting on top was Holly's locator. Root groaned. Holly would not willingly give up her equipment. No LEP officer would. What sort of demonstration, you demented freak? Again, that cold chuckle. (laughs) A demonstration of my utter commitment to my goals. Root should have started to worry about his own health then, but he was too busy worrying about Holly's. If you've harmed one tip of my officer's pointy ears, your officer? Oh, we have management. How privileged. All the better to make my point. Alarm bells went off in Root's head. Your point. The voice emanating from the aluminium speaker grid was as serious as nuclear winter. My point, little fairy man, is that I'm not so much someone to be trifled with, meaning to be messed with. Now, if you would please observe the package. The commander duly observed. It was a nondescript enough shape. It was flat, like a sort of slab of putty, or, oh no. Beneath the sealant, a red light flicked on. Fly, little fairy, said the voice, and tell your friends, Artemis Fowl II says hello. Beside the red light, green symbols began to click through a routine. Root recognised them from his human studies class back in the academy. They were numbers and they were going backwards. It was a countdown. Ah, darn it, growled Root. There's no point translating that word as it would have to be censored, meaning that was a, a fairy swear word. He turned and fled up the corridor, Artemis Fowl's mocking tones carrying down the metal funnel. Three, said the human. Two, Garvet, repeated Root. The corridor seemed much longer now. A sliver of starry sky peeked through a wedge of open door. Root activated his wings. 
This would take some fancy flying. The hummingbird's span was barely narrower than the ship's corridor. One. Sparks flew as the electronic wings scraped a protruding pipe. Root cartwheeled, writing himself at Mach 1. Zero, said the voice. Boom! Inside the vacuum-packed package, a detonator sparked, igniting a kilogram of pure Semtex. Semtex is a, 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 an explosive, um, a very powerful explosive. The white hot reaction devoured the surrounding oxygen in a nanosecond, in a nanosecond and surged down the path of least resistance, which was, of course, immediately after LEP Commander Root. Root dropped his visor, opening the throttle to maximum. The door was metres away now. It was just a matter of what reached it first, the fairy or the fireball. He made it, barely. He could feel the explosion rattling his torso as he threw himself into a reverse loop. Flames latched onto his jumpsuit, licking along his legs. Root continued his manoeuvre, crashing directly into the icy water. He broke the surface, swearing. Above him, the whaler had been totally consumed by noxious flames. Commander, came a voice in his earpiece. It was Foley. He was back in range. Root lifted free of the water's grip. Commander, what's your status? My status, Foley, is extremely annoyed. Get on your computers. I want to know everything there is to know about one Artemis Fowl. And I want to know it before I get back to base. Yes, sir, Commander, right away. No wisecrack. Even, even Foley realised that this was not the time. Root hovered at 300 metres. Below him, the blazing whaler drew emergency vehicles like moths to a light. He dusted charred threads from his elbows. There will be a reckoning for this Artemis fowl, he vowed. Count on it. Goodness me, he had a narrow escape. Artemis fowl nearly blew him up. Okay, that was the end of the chapter. I did read a little bit longer than uh, I planned to, but uh, I wanted to uh, get to the end of that chapter. All right, everybody. I hope you're enjoying it. I am. I think it's very good. All right. See you tomorrow. Bye.